It's, I think, a win. Alright. I kind of I like Ilios. I already took a quick look, but I think this one should be pretty good. Against uh, Eternal? Yeah. Okay, you still want to take a look again? Uh, what, what do you mean? You said you already took a look at this, or? Yeah. Okay. I didn't stream it. Okay, okay. Sounds good. I have really not looked at Violet's POV much from a first person. Okay, so I, I put low latency on the stream now, so it seems to be making a much, like, a big difference. It's only, like, a second or two behind now, so... Okay, yeah, let me... So this is gonna be... Yeah, yeah, this is way better. I always have it on this. Okay. Let's shift that over. So this is interesting, because now we're looking at it from the other team's perspective, albeit, um, like, a different position. But this is the beginning of the series, which obviously Paris eventually wins. But we look at these comps, right? Very similar to before, although Exe and Ansan are just opting for the Widow. Uh, I mean, I think this makes sense just based on the context of the map, right? It's like I Ilios Ruins. Probably like the single best control Widow map. Um, but broadly speaking, the comps are like the same as what we were looking at before. Um, but this time, obviously, we're looking at it from Violet's POV, right? So maybe we should talk about like BAP a little bit. Um, so like as a, like a high level bat player yourself, Aaron, what do you like? What do you feel like bat's role is in this comp? Yeah, like, what are you looking uh, to do here? All right, so when we're playing bat brig. Right, brig is gonna, I think the role of bat is mainly to keep the tanks up. Right. Um, and you're being thinking about I feel like using I feel is just big, right? And then otherwise, yeah, pocket tanks. And then brig should be taking care of the DPS. I mean, I obviously heal the DPS if you get the chance, um, but it's just much easier for Brig to heal, right? Because I think trying to hit a Genji midair or like trying to hit a Widow who's like way in the back on high ground is just like near impossible. Right. Um. So, yeah. So I think as as Bap, we're gonna be looking to help with the frontline damage. Right. Right. And, and we'll see that um, Violet is the reason why we're looking at him is because he's so good at weaving in the damage. So I think it's right. very important to pay attention to how he does that. Right. Uh, he just he does such an amazing job of like weaving in like uh, damage shots with his heal uh, grenades. Right. Um, but yeah, so we'll be, I think the biggest thing we'll be looking at is just like again, I think positioning is important to t take note. But then like eye field usage, and then I guess just overall like cooldown usage and how he like like just his style. I think uh, his aggressive style is very. Uh, I think it's a great style to play. Um, yep. And uh, especially in an organized team environment, it makes it like it's game changing. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let's see how he pulls it off. I mean, I agree with all those points, obviously. And like, I think, of course, I hopefully what we'll see with Violet is that like he has this kind of more unique aggressive play style, but he still, of course, has like all the good fundamentals down, right? So, like, land right. usage should still be there, um, amp matrix usage should still, should still be there. Maybe it's slightly different and more aggressive. Um, than others, but like it's still a very valid kind of approach. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he uses all those cooldowns too. But let's uh, let's get into it here. Oh yes, the latency is so much better. Yeah, yeah. I should have had that for the last five, but you live and you learn. All right. So immediately he's spamming the shields, right? Right. Um, okay, like, look, look how he like flicks down to do the shots. Like that's exactly what you want to be doing. Um... And he's not just spamming healing grenades for no reason, right? Like, if the tanks are right. full and he knows the shield presence is there, he's just, he's by default almost, like, yeah. damaging. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and you see, like, you see that, like, I think the hero that probably maybe that stands out most is, like, Anna. Like, a lot of Anna's will just, like, waste shots on, like, fully healed targets. Um, but it's, like, this, the, the, the concept is the same. Like, he, like, if you're not healing, like, you can be doing damage. If you don't have to heal, do damage, right? And, yep. like, you might not think it does a lot, but in the end it's like you might break a shield faster you might you know get that chunk damage so that your genji can dash through right like, right that kind of matters and we saw at the end there he uses eye field i think it's totally fine right because the fight's over he's gonna have it by the time the next fight comes up well i was gonna ask you about that actually because i find that really fascinating right because it's like i feel like by default um like you're kind of told to hold immortality like lamp a lot right because like it, it has such a long cooldown but in a fight yeah. like that like, do you feel like it's, like, I mean, I guess you kind of already said that, like, you've kind of already answered this question, but, like, have, do you think it's all okay to go for that to, like, kind of save your squishy in a 1v1? Yeah, um, I think, like, I think so, right? Because, 
I mean, it's probably not a big deal, even if uh, who was it? Twilight goes down there, right? Because I think, right? Because I think Sparkle dies at the same time. Like, say, like Twilight died and Sparkle died, they're gonna die at the same time, right? And they're probably yeah. gonna get back relatively similar, but yep. Uh, I mean, preferably Twilight doesn't die, right? So he can be positioned, ready when they push in, and all that stuff. So I, but it's like, I think there's two ways to look at lamp, right? Like. You should be looking at lamp, right? If you know, like, oh, they have a blade or they have a flux, right? We need to be saving for that specifically. But it's like, otherwise, um, there's, there's like a great way to use lamp is just uh, what we call, like, just like you can like use it to push tempo, right? Right. Um, or, you know, like, I think like, you definitely don't want to burn lamp. I think one of the worst things to do with lamp is just to burn it, like, super early in the fight, right? It's like, I think as long as the fight's like slowing down or like closing out, it's fine if you want to burn lamp. Right. Because um, in general, you're gonna have it by the time you need it. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, I think, yeah. It's I think that's probably yeah. So I have to say that one. we're going into this next fight here. We have Ant Matrix. Like, how how do you think like we yeah, should be thinking so about using this? Always window early. Um, mm -hmm. you want to be so like if you have an Arisa, always. Uh, it would be best if you ask your Arisa, Can you like save like let's let's pull let's pull window right right um that's very very strong i mean it, you know it gets rid of cooldowns you can maybe get a pick and you just do like insane damage um and it just like sets the tempo like you like you you deny space first of all and then like you just like yeah again it's just like you're you're burning their resources right just one ultimate and it's really good and you build it really fast um especially like when we know that the shock convincingly won that right like look at fielders like charge versus his like you want to use yours as early as possible like if you have the advantage go ahead and use it right but yeah in general window early um and look to combo with it if possible mm -hmm. uh now there are there you know we'll, we'll see i think in a couple fights he uses window in a very different way okay um, like mid fight but i think yeah like since he is he's the only one with an alt right we're gonna be looking i imagine he's gonna be looking at window very early and yeah. this team is gonna be trying to play through that um yeah Let's see how this plays out. So yeah, I mean definitely. All right, so window here. Right? We're, we're denying their push right now with this window. It's great. Um, like you might not like they like we even got a kill. Like sometimes you might not even get a kill, but it's like you deny their push, right? Right. I think a very bad mistake is just holding on to window way too long and then like they're already on their rotation, right? I think windowing during rotation is good or like windowing at a choke, right? So like in, that's, in that case right there, the little hallway on the right, like, that's a great choke to window. Right. Um, that's great heads up by the shock to like push that choke specifically. So I think some some teams might have like sat back a little bit. And if you had sat back, right, right. they might have been able to rotate through with, like uh, and like avoid it. So... Yeah, and just to be clear there, so it's like, I don't believe unless I missed it. So Shock didn't actually get any kills there, right? It's just more they denied the push. Um, I thought... Or was it... Maybe let me just go back real quick. We'll see. Say so Windows... Oh! Choi... I don't know if that was because of the... Win I guess it was kind of because of the window. But I guess yeah, my man. point was, like, let's just say they don't get that kill there. But, like, obviously the rest of Eternal just kind of kites that back, right? right? So, like, let's just say that, like, Shock didn't accomplish anything but just preventing... Or sorry, Paris didn't accomplish. Or yeah, Shock didn't accomplish anything but preventing Paris from pushing. Would you still say that that window is like worth it? Yeah, I. Because when Paris pushes back in now, like obviously Shock's not going to have that window, right? So. Yeah, like, I, I think it's yeah. You know, I think it's fair to say that that is a very aggressive window. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think I mean yeah, it might have been like a practice, like you know. I I think they they were meaning to just like take these choke fights. Right. But like, let's say, yeah, so like if they didn't get a kill, I mean, I think it's fine, right? Because you, you, you're still getting capture percentage. Right. And you're just farming ults at this point. Like you have, like, I think, like, Shock has a much better angle here. Like, Choi's farming. Like, Smurf is like 30% more than Ben Best. Um, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think the fact like, that you have control of the point is definitely important, too, because, like, you're, yeah, you're getting that objective like, pressure. It's like maybe we think about okay, so what if Violet held it like 
Like maybe you let the eternal push in a little bit more. Right. The the tricky thing is it's such a fine line, right? Because like ideally you get it right as they're moving in, they can't just cut it back. But right. you also run the risk to your point of like sometimes you just wait too long and it's too late, and they're just able to push mm -hmm. past the window, and that would be worse, right? So like if you lose the fight and then you start losing capture percentage, so I think this is all to say and like just to be clear, um, I think certainly erring on the side of just being a bit too aggressive with the window. Uh, mm -hmm. especially when the team is like pushing up with you like that uh yeah yeah I, uh... so just making sure everyone's topped up between the fight as soon as someone comes with an los switching to the damage when everyone's full though right yeah lamp when the literally the entire team is low yeah, that's a great lamp. So it's these are actually yeah. actually um, some really good plays by Paris as well. Um, yeah, like preferably he would have like got gotten to hold the lamp like for the flux, but but in that situation, based on the state of the fight, yeah, he really like, didn't have yeah, that choice. So yeah, like everyone is a weak. I think. Yeah, I think. It's oh very wait, easy. the shock win this? Oh my word! Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very easy as BAP to be like, oh, like I'm just gonna. Hold, hold lamp so hard, but it's like, oh, like if your team's dead already, it's like, I, yeah, just like use, I feel like, don't be super reserved with lamp. Like, yes, you want to hold it for like specific ults, but it's better to use, like, you know, to have a team to, you know, <laughs> that's still alive than to just hold it for an ult that they might not even use at that point because like they already killed someone. Okay. Oh, wait, so hold on. This on. is really oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, Wait, let's think about why, like, why is Violet up back here, right? Yeah. Like, it's a much harder angle to heal his tanks, right? He's split. Right. So, what is he thinking? And my my initial, my very, like, the instinct here is just to be like, well, he knows that Sparkle is Blade. Right. And we see right now that they pulled Blade. So, what is the best thing to support to do, right? Is to play in the back. Play mm -hmm. away from your team. So, either that way... Sparkle has a hard commit onto you and like soup like be super deep, right? That way he's in a more dangerous position so that your team can maybe like turn on him and kill him easier. Right. Uh, I mean and and just in general, like if you bunch up for a blade, I think that's just like Blade's more harder. likely to get more yeah. value. Yeah, yeah, right. Um and that's and that and that's why like, like pull combo with the blade is so good, right? So right. You just bunch him up. Um but yeah, so I just want to point out Violet's position here, right? Like it's it's in the back, it's on the high ground, right? right? It's much harder for Sparkle to get over here. And you notice that Sparkle doesn't even choose to go for him, right? So, uh, and and this window here is is pretty aggressive. He's using it mostly as a heal window, right? right. Like the earlier window we saw was like, in terms it was more for damage, right? But I think something to learn and use is to like if you learn to use the window in the right times for like healing. Like mm -hmm. the the two times heal through it is very 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 strong, um, and it, I think it's a little harder to, and it's like a little bit more nuanced to figure out when the best times are to use it like this. But there are great times to use it like um, to save your teammates this way rather than through four damage. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I, you hit on the two main points there, right? Like first was like positioning, playing split from your team, so the Genji has to make a decision between coming for you versus the team, and the second thing, like you said, was the cooldown usage, right? So like first, I mean. So the window, I think, is very. Uh, we we should definitely talk about that. I'm which 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 you did, but like that's important to point out. But also the lamp coming out immediately, right? Because like you know the blade is very lethal. So yep. one having that cooldown and being ready to use it and then using it immediately to try. I mean Twilight still ends up dying, but like, you know Violet did basically what he did what he could, right? He threw the lamp out. He's pumping out healing grenades through a matrix to kind of get as much. Like he you really can't heal anymore. He even used the left shift. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think. I think it's also important to point out that like he you know he he's he's going for it right i think so many supports are very scared right about like yes there it is very easy to like just throw a support out throw a support alt out and not get anything right but there's so many times when i'm playing in like i don't know in like diamond matches that are play or whatever and i just like support just like hold on to the world like, holding it hold. right and it's like there's like like times like this right like i don't remember exactly if they win this but you know, like, this window is a great, 
attempt at trying to turn the fight, right? Especially when you have nothing else. Um, right. You know, but, like, if we look at Twilight, right? Like, should Twilight have committed there? Probably not, because, you know, Brigalt does not really save you from a blade, and if he's if you're getting bladed right then, it's like, you know, probably not. And, like, let's say Violet got dove by Sparkle, right? Right. Like, I, don't think, I don't think Violet would have committed this window. But, uh, you know, like, you know, in these fights, it's like, like, if you're Anna or, like, whatever, and you see, like, good chance to nano it's like yeah just like go for it like just because someone's blading and like maybe potentially team white but it's like maybe like maybe you can do something like always you think about how you can turn the fight as a support it's like um like support ults are so strong and it's just like it hurts me when i see like supports like hold all like hold it for like the next fight when like yeah when when, it, when it's like there is a chance to use ults right and like try and turn it's like yeah, so I think there's two main things I want to touch on there. So one is kind of like you're talking about, like, the base play style of Violet, which is certainly so refreshing to watch, right? Like, it's so free-flowing, and he really just goes for the plays instead of being, like, so reserved, right? So we're seeing, like, weaving in tons of damage. We're seeing using lamps, like, one in the more standard way to save from ults, but also, like, if the fight is getting a bit, you know, like, dicey and, like, just to kind of save people and win duels, we're seeing aggressive ant matrix usage both in, like, a selfish kind of way and also, like, like using the team's poke sort of way yep. so that i think is really refreshing and i think it's it's good to see this kind of support aggro style this very playmaking style um that i think is both fun to watch like fun to play and also just very effective right um i, I mean i would say like i think the difference between like uh like masters and higher supports and other tiers is mm -hmm. that they've those kind of supports have moved on from being just heal bots right mm -hmm um yeah i think yeah it's just like watching pro play it's just like so clear like you know he's like pumping damage he's like like he's doing so much to try to turn a fight like he's outputting his like value like i think like if we looked at maybe like a plat baptiste right um you know ignoring ignoring like probably some flaw like very blatant flaws that would have happened but it's like you probably would have seen that kind of a baptiste just like throwing in heal grenades and not really thinking about oh how can i use my my window or how can i use my you know like you know my my lamp to like try and turn the fight right it's like that kind of support play is just what makes the difference um, between higher tier and yeah. lower tier and the second thing i want to just very quickly touch on and you kind of alluded to it before is just thinking about like how would we as the bat player would have played this differently had sparkle come from for us instead of like the mm -hmm. Arisa brig right so i mean i mean maybe i'll, I'll try to propose a solution first and then you can kind of critique that and analyze it but like certainly it's like the best defense against blade i feel like is immortality field right so like yeah. obviously like if, if sparkle is coming for us instead if the Genji's coming for us like we need to lamp ourselves yes, um yeah. and the second thing i feel like you could do and i don't know the exact like rotation or like the exact timing of this but like certainly like maybe using the like the the jump boots yeah yeah so I, I don't know if like you would fall down to high ground while charging it and then just jump back immediately or like you wait till for him to dash on you and then you jump up and then you throw a lamp so maybe you can help us on the exact order of how you'd like use the jump and the lamp yeah. like the order uh, but i mean i think i mean yeah i think lamp and then jump jump boots is exactly what i would do right so i would immediately like if i see the genji dashing at me i would throw a lamp onto my feet and then the, immediately after that, I know that the Genji's going to be looking to try to break that. So in that period of time, you need to be thinking about how you can juke the Genji, right? And a lot of times, the best thing to do is just to use your jump boots. So either you can just, like, charge it immediately and start, like, just do, like, a really high jump. Right. Or you can, like, drop on the low ground, like, bait him down and then jump back up. Like, like right. you, know, you can get creative with it. But I think the key thing is to know that, like, that util utilizing your jump boots in that manner is very, very important. Like, right. Like, you know, like, I think it's obvious that jump boots are great for the uh you know getting high ground or whatever right but it's also just so good at juking damage really really good and like if you can master that like you're 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 gonna like you're like you're probably gonna climb more if you can just stay alive using your jump boots like that right um but yeah it's like but yeah i mean like you you i think you nailed it like i would immediately throw a field and then just be looking to juke with my my jumps and then and then of course you can throw the left shift in there at some point to kind of help you sustain a little bit right, more yeah, um, yeah. brig brig is probably going to be like trying to pack you brig might even rally for you we don't know yeah. but uh, but and then uh, another critical thing which you mentioned is maybe you don't window like this because it doesn't make as much sense i, I would definitely not window at all i think yeah yeah i would be 
Because all you focus on trying to juke, juke the Genji, uh, yeah. Stay alive, yeah. And it's not like really uh, shooting him is very practical. Yeah, like you can shoot. I would, I would still like try to deal as much damage as you can while you're juking and stuff. Right. But you do kind of just have to like trust and hope that your teammates also turn and help you to kill him. Right. Um, because I think eventually, if no one's actually shooting at him, he's probably gonna get the kill, unless you do an insane juke. But, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's a good hypothetical to go through. All right, let's keep going here, and let me just make sure I got the sound back on. All right. So this is looking lost. So probably get a reset here. Still just kind of pumping in the damage. Um, yep. Not worried about trying to save Smurf at all. So that's interesting. Yeah, the fight's lost, right? So I think the call is probably came up to just reset. He's just trying to look for maybe a pick or some damage. Because maybe a pick there is more valuable than just trying to sustain for yeah. no reason. Yeah, exactly, um, so right? The risk is going to die anyway, so it's like... Quite the heads up play. So yeah, I mean, by default, beginning of these fights, everyone is full. Not like wasting time with heal grenades, just like putting in the damage... Uh, yeah. Because no one really ideally should need healing here. And yeah, using the exo boots to just constantly get better angles, like. Mm -hmm. So, just an, so much of an emphasis on an awareness for just the damage opportunities. Yeah. I mean, just constantly looking at Sparkle there, like. Yep. And just trusting the tanks. Um, and like as soon as like Choi gets low there, like puts a heal grenade down. Choi got bursted down a bit too fast, so I don't really think that was Violet's fault. That he died. Yeah, so Shock does get a little split there, I think, which makes Violet's job really hard. Or right. a lot harder. Um, Let me just play it out a little bit more. Looks like they lost this, but... Yeah. What else? What can I say? Um... But just the damage, like, straight out of coming from spawn, from the start, just constant damage as he's approaching the point, like, just constant jumping, and then, like, when Sparkle was, like, playing really far up, just, like, focusing him down, putting in a ton of damage. Um, I, I will say this, though. I think I am a little surprised. I don't... I'm a little surprised that he was jumping so freely, because we know Xyz on Widow, right? Yeah, that's... Jumping like targets is a very easy target, or much easier target to hit. So I'm curious if like, you know, Striker was just communicating that he was on the Widow so that he, would, he knew that he was safe to be jumping. But it's like, I think in general, a good practice is to be very conscious of when you're jumping, playing against a Widow and maybe avoiding less, right? I think right. Uh, I think it's important to like, when you're on BAP, there are certain heroes that are like, that it benefits you a lot more to be jumping, all right? So just for example, like Doomfist, mm -hmm. like building in the, like constantly charging up your jump and being ready to jump over his punch or anything or like his like slam or whatever yep it's very it's very good but say if you're playing as a widow jumping is a little bit more dangerous right so you might be want to be a little bit more reserved with that right but yeah i think mean, that's all i wanted to say on that well and i think one more kind of caveat to mention like in the same way that like in the sparkle vod we talked about how like a lot of what sparkle is able to do is based around like the kind of play style of the team around him i think it's also very important to mention that like part of why violet is able to like weave in so much damage is because the tanks aren't taking unnecessary poke and aren't just getting low for no yep. bad reason right yeah, Whereas, like great. if you're on ranked like if you're playing ranked and you're like you do need to like keep your tanks up you shouldn't just like let them die at the cost of just you're, damage you're, prob so. you're probably healing more you're healing yeah you're 100 percent. like like yeah everyone yeah like i think that's a very important thing to point out that yes like shock are very clean about not taking poke so and then, and then grouping up right and pushing together um so like i think the general principle we're seeing with violet's play is like you know not just being a heal bot and like certainly looking for the opportunities to do damage and especially when your whole team is full it's like i mean yes like put some damage out like why, why are you healing there but like certainly in a, in a ranked mode you have to be more cognizant of the fact that like a lot more people on your team are going to be taking a lot more damage and so like you're not going to have quite the opportunities that he has to just hold left click a ton yeah. Um, but it's more about just being aware of, like, you know, in the smaller windows you do have, like, going for the damage plays. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all I wanted to say. Um, just, like, in terms of establishing context for, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, how this play is, is certainly very different than just your average ranked game. Um, 
I don't know if Choi is low here. It's I'm kind of surprised that he's maybe he's just. I mean, it's not like he can see the enemy anyway, so. I'm really surprised he didn't just try to lamp himself there. That's a very... I I, I think he could have been quicker, yeah. Um... Like, that just seemed super dangerous. Like, there were three people on Eternal kind of looking at him, and he kind of jumped into a corner. Yeah, yeah. And he was just very vulnerable there. I, I don't... I think... So, I don't think he was expecting the... The Hammond yeah. slam. Yeah. Which is, like, pretty big burst damage. Right. Um... I mean, like, so I can kind of, like, I think... He felt, like, relatively safe, right? Because he, he, so, he hit the left shift, so he hit self-heal. And... I don't really know exactly. I don't know. It's, like... You don't want to, like... You don't want to be, like, super, like... Panicky about lamping yourself. Like, yes, you should not die and go for sure lamp yourself, but... Um... Yeah, I don't know. That that was that was a tough situation. I think yeah, he probably could have been a little bit faster there. because uh, I mean he dies with windows, which is not great. And it's last fight. So I think he had he could have been a little bit more ready to save himself there, but Yeah, and I mean I, maybe we, we don't want to go too far into this because this is more macro stuff, but I, I do think certainly the pathing and area of the map that Shock is trying to control is very fascinating to me, just because like this kind of mini bridge section is like an area of the map i feel like a lot of times you don't see teams try to take control of like yeah like in ranked i think coast is more popular just kind of fighting around point um so these kind of hallways seem a bit awkward um I'm sure, i mean obviously they have a read like this is part of their game plan um and paris is over here too occupying this space but uh yeah i mean certainly it's like you got to keep yourself alive at all costs right i think like i think one of the worst things one of the things that annoy me the most is when bat players die first. Yeah, and like it happens, but like you have two, you like your two cooldowns are, like can keep you alive, right? Like you should first, I think you should use left shift to keep your life yourself alive for sure, and yeah. then definitely lamp right, if you need to. Right. But again, the best the best defense against getting picked is just positioning. But right, you know, sometimes like in this scenario, maybe the plan is to push this way. Right. Uh, which you could argue they maybe should have gone a different way, but and I don't really know why they're like the brig and the bat aren't quite together. Mm -hmm. so it I'm looks like sure the sigma might be off angling too. Um, yeah. And I imagine Onsan is somewhere in the back taking an angle, and Striker might be just on a totally different angle. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how this plays out. This may just actually be a lost uh, point now. On the shock clutches this out but yeah i mean violet dying there it's just really bad and he didn't even get to use matrix so that's yeah pretty that was definitely not the best fight from him yeah that last fight i think was the first one where there were maybe some noticeable misplays perhaps But other than that, just a lot of playmaking opportunities. Let's see. Alright. So it looks like Xe is sticking with the Sombra on the other side. Interesting. So I'll probably, we'll definitely pause this, maybe even rewind. There's a lot of really good stuff here. Okay, this is actually kind of crazy. All right, I'm probably going to rewind this and talk through, we should talk through a lot of that again. That was actually kind of insane though. But 
I mean, there are so many little things there that we should point out. So, like, again, just, like, the ability to weave in the damage is just incredible. Um, aiming the grenades at, like, really impactful spots on the ground where it splashes and gets multiple people at once. Um, like, you see here, just, like, hitting that grenade in to get the heal and then immediately flicking to the damage, breaking the lamp down, putting his lamp in a corner where it can't be destroyed. Yep. Um, and then as soon as the window comes up in the mid-fight, doesn't even hesitate, immediately puts it down as he's falling from air. Yep. Where he and his Orisa can use it. And then just pumping as much damage as possible through it, and then only putting the healing he absolutely needed to keep Choi up. That was actually insane. Yeah, I think that lamp by far was in really, really good. Um, and so that window, right, I think it's important to talk about, because I think... A lot of the players on, um, you know, just for example, UNC, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something I, I just like have to keep reminding them is just to be proactive. Yep. And a lot of, I, I noticed this, that people aren't just aren't either aren't aware that their alt is up or that their alt is about to be up. Um, and then they just like, like, it's just not in their mind. So they don't use it or they're just like too hesitant. Right. Yep. Um, but it's like, I think I'm bad specifically, right? Like, you know, like, you know you're gonna build windows super fast, fast. and probably like yep. you're probably gonna be you should be the first person to get your ult. Right. Uh, and so just like you know, having your finger on the trigger there, getting ready to throw it out is is you know very important because you know like Fielder actually beat him there. Right. And it was actually yeah. a really good window from Fielder, but like his lamp was just insane and like the healing was good and like no one really pressured him, so uh, he got the counter window off. But yeah, it's just like I, I like I didn't this is something like I didn't realize that like you know lower tier players had trouble with, but it's just mm -hmm. like being aware of like you know when your ult's gonna be up and just like using it. Mm -hmm. Being ready to use your ult is like very very important, especially on support. It's, it's like you can turn a fight, especially with window. You just like turn a fight immediately like that. Um, I think that's a good point, and I think two things we can learn there is Violet both had like to your point the understanding that a his ultimate was about to be up and b yeah. he knew exactly how he wanted to use it because he did not hesitate he immediately went for it as he was descending midair yeah. so we both yes. had the awareness of like how fast it was charging as well as like the usage on the back end of like mm -hmm. what he was trying to go for um just instinctually almost i mean just... and i'll tell you in that in, in that fight he's he's like when he's like healing like i like, kind of spam like spamming those like left or those right clicks like you know, you have like you kind of have like mental space there to be checking your ult, right? Yeah. So what I what I would be doing is like I would be spamming, you know, trying to keep everyone up, whatever. Right. But I would, be, I would like like actively I would be thinking and watching that ult meter, right? Then the moment it's like up, you just want to be ready to go for it. Um, and yeah, he he did it really like very like smoothly, right? He did the jump up, he like laid it down like mid fall, right? That was that was that was pretty classy. Um, but. Yeah, just like keeping an eye on your alt, your alt meter, right? Yeah. And like, I think it, this is just part of playing double shield, right? I think just the first fight, Bab should just be aware that you're basically playing for a window. And whoever gets a better window and whoever gets more value through the window wins that fight, right? Right. And Shot came out on top of that, so. That was just an incredible fight, honestly. I mean, you can, you can just yeah. tell like the pace of that fight at this level is just actually incredible. And like all the split decisions... Yeah. that all the heroes are having to make i mean even from bath's perspective but wow i mean that was and we haven't you know we haven't really talked about how to use left shift um, yeah i i think some people have asked about that but left shift like generally you want to like rely on grenades if there's not a lot of damage but the moment you know the healing becomes intense and you have like a lot of people to heal around you mm -hmm. like go ahead and slap that left shift down right right um sometimes you can save it for like when you're reloading that way you can have a continuous heal going mm -hmm. um but yeah, definitely use left shift to like increase your healing output at, at the right times, mm -hmm. or, or cover for um, times when you you're reloading, um, or or you know use it to keep yourself alive. But we already said that. But yeah. What about scenarios where it's like you know your team, like a bunch of people on your team are critical, like uh, mm -hmm. like when he when he put the lamp down, right? So basically, what I'm getting at is like, what's the relationship, if at all, there may there may not be between left shift and lamp. So like, if your team is critical, you throw the lamp down to save them. Do you immediately yeah. also just follow up with the left shift to kind of get them yeah. up quickly? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Right. It's like, yeah, getting them above. I think getting your teammates above critical is like I don't. I don't think that's a. That's not a waste of. Okay. Cooldown. Okay. 
because I know that's yeah. something I kind of do, but I was just ch checking to see if that's like a good habit or a bad habit. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, that was that was quite the fight. So we'll see how he kind of sets up here. So playing in this BAP um, seems to be an understanding for both teams to kind of fight over this right section. Although Paris is making a rotation. Oh, they're still going to the right. Yeah, um, another thing is you also notice that he just like, he, he takes a high ground when he can, right? Um, right. And just like, it gives you a better angle for your grenades and you can kind of like get a better idea of what's going on on your team. Um, and you're just not too vulnerable, right? Because like, it would yeah. be very hard for him to take any sort of poke here. Like if Sparkle or Axie try to come after him, that is a huge commitment from them. Yeah. It's very difficult to get think, this. I think some people are like, have a misconception of like you know like oh yes like high ground is good but if i'm on high ground i'm gonna be targeted right but like in the time that they're spending you know like the people like when you're on high ground and people dive you or like try to push you off like that's the resources spent right yeah yeah dislodge you and like like yes maybe it would it would have been better if you could have just sat up there and you know done your thing but it's still value to have them you know spend time or like cool down to like try and push you out right right so always use high ground and high ground. Yeah, high ground is just always really good, especially for BAP. I think it's good. Uh, um, just always be aware, right? I think this goes back to what I said about you know like not jumping too much against the widow. It's like being aware, like like if they were playing a different comp, right? And say like being on high ground was supposedly dangerous. I don't really know what comp would make that dangerous, but like just like always think about your positioning, like where you can best like get the most value, but also stay the safest, right? And I think key to support and honestly any. Well, actually, all roles, right? Like, where can I get the most value while, you know, staying alive? Um, yeah. Definitely. And, and I mean, we this is kind of a, a slightly tangent, like, an unrelated point, but, like, I just want to point out, like, we're seeing the window being thrown here, and, like, maybe we didn't explicitly touch on it in the first round, but, like, the window positioning around the corner is so powerful, right? Like, making it so that it's so much harder to break the drone. I know when Fielder threw out his drone in the first fight, it was, like, like... Uh, Violet was literally shooting at himself and it was like out in the open and I don't know looks like this lamp from Fielder may okay it's sort of around the corner um, yeah so I would say Fielder's lamp is going to be much better than Violet's Violet's just kind of it, really I guess in this okay I thought it was in the corner but I guess this time he threw it in yeah, the open it's very reactionary um, um, but he kind of really... has to at least get it out just to save Smurf so yeah, it does get yeah. value but had it just been like right here for example that would have been um, a lot nicer would have been better yep yeah. I thought based on the crosshair it was going there, but I guess that was a few seconds ago. So let's see how this plays out. So this rotation is mostly because I think he needed to just maintain LOS with his tanks. Mm -hmm. um, jumping there, probably just in case Sparkle comes for him, and also he's just like untouched through all this. So imagine Shock is losing this, but like Violet was alive this whole time, and he's still weaving in tons of damage and almost has another window. Yeah, unfortunately his team kites kind of a funny way to left right. side right there, so he didn't have an angle to heal them. But Yeah. Um and so I also wanna talk about like, you know, like we talked about when we we're doing Genji, like what are we thinking about between fights, right? I think support it's very important to be thinking tracking alts, right? Tracking specifically tracking dangerous alts that you can counter really well. So like you know, on BAP, right, we're looking for, we're going to be thinking about, oh, have I seen Blade in a while? Has, you know, like, has Genji done a lot of damage, you know? Or has the Sigma, you know, does the Sigma have Flux? Like, you're going to be thinking about this kind of stuff in fight. Right. And, you know, obviously these, these like, owl teams are going to be talking constantly and tracking like that. Um, but, you know, to improve, like, personal gameplay, I think it's very important to start picking that up. And I think most people do that, right? Like, I think, like, just for example, like, Lucio's, like, like this is no meta or right now, but you know Lucio's. You know the at the very least to track you know like blades, right? Right. Like beating for blade, and it's just like you know I think it's like if you can do that, like just at least like you don't track everything, right? But like if you can right. track a few things, it's just it it just it just like in mid fight when it comes out, you're just more ready to react. Right. Just like mentally preparing yourself for before a fight. So. Um, you know, like, and it goes the same. Like, we said that for Genji, right? Like, thinking about what cooldowns you need to be thinking about. Like, how do you want to position for your blade and, like, whatever. If you're able to plan better and just be, you know, you're just a few steps ahead of your opponent, right? So it's just more proactive, less reactive. And whatever you're reacting to, like, was already part of the plan. You have the cooldowns and resources available to you that you need. 
And yeah. I think, like you said, like especially if you're starting out playing on rank, maybe a lower elos, especially like you don't need to track everything, like all six alts on the enemy side, but like the critical ones that relate to like your kit and what you can impact. So like if you're playing a support, like tracking, like you said, like the big damage, big wiping ultimates or cooldowns, um, and just having your resources available for that are important. Um, I'll be interested yeah, to like, see how he plays around Sombra too, if the EMP becomes an issue. Right. Exactly, EMP as well, and it's like. Like if you're tracking these things, I just think about it. You can position better. You can like save your cooldowns. Uh, you can tell your teammates right, like they can play around it. Yeah, but just, I think like, track, tracking is so good. What's really interesting with that last fight is again, it's like Sparkles Blade ends up getting good value, but he doesn't just save the lamp for the blade because he had to lamp Smurf just to keep him up earlier in that fight. So it's like you can have the plan, but also know that like you know if a teammate starts right. overextending or they're making some sort of mistake. Um, yeah, yeah, like I, still yeah, being ready I, to adapt. So I think that can be a bit tricky too. Um, yeah, that goes back to I think on the first point I said like, like yes, plan to save it for an alt, but don't be afraid to use it because I think if you like, yeah, like, if you let people die, and you have the cooldown. It's just like, it, it's just not good, right? Like, yeah, right. like, like they might just win that fight without even having to blade or flux, right? It's like, oh, that's a great point. I, yeah, I didn't think of it like that. So. Yeah, don't be afraid to use it to save people. All right, Even if it's not against an ult. See how this plays out. Um, staying with the core of the team. Early lamp again. Really good damage angle. Um, I mean, this is just a big combination by Paris here. Um, Shock may win this, but Violet has not really contributed much to this fight. But he did get fluxed. I guess, yeah. did he not have window there? Oh, he got hacked, so. Well. Oh, he windowed. But. Or sorry, did I say window or lamp? I, I meant to say, like, did he have lamp for flux? Uh, I mean, he, he, he got he got killed in midair, though. I don't think lamp saves you midair. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, you said he had an early lamp, so I, I assume he threw it out, but. I know he had an early window, uh, maybe he did throw out the lamp early. I know he was hacked at one point too, so... Okay, but Shock kind of clutches out the fight, so again, like, preparing between, like, fights, like, starting on this nice high ground position. Yep, and so here, right, I'm assuming he's he's very ready for... Here, they probably know that XE has the EMP, EMP right? yep. So let's think about Violet's in terms of that context, right? Like, you see he's playing Split. Right. So we see he's playing split from the rest of the team, and, he, and he's just like, he's not a static target either, because he's already kind of rotated from that high ground to this kind of back left corner, and he may go back to top right. Um, certainly, Scout is probably, uh, not Scout, uh, Shock is trying to scout as much as possible to figure out where XE is. Um, constantly weaving in the damage, probably spy checking every once in a while. Full damage here, little heals just to make sure people are topped up. As soon as Smurf is Same kind of taking a lot of damage. In the high ground here. So really uh, good rotation. He didn't get hacked at all. Um, yeah, and he, and he had Lamp to keep Smurf up. He probably couldn't yeah, shield himself. Kinda, you almost kind of want to play like Lucia, right? Like high ground corners a little bit. And just make sure you can get your Lamp out to save people during EMP. And so I imagine, you know, we're thinking about this fight, it's going to be an early window of some sort, because they're already pushed up here. Um, although, they probably realize that Bongo Blade is coming in, so they want to just make sure they have the space to counter that. And I really like this positioning, not being too greedy, but just playing in the back. You know Paris has the touch, and they need to expend ults just to get on point. Yeah. So using the window to really make even touching point an absolute, like, you know, very difficult thing to do. And then also playing in the back where you're safe and you can just free fire and weave in any sort of damage or heals you need. Lamp around the corner again. Good heal from toilet there to keep him up. Prioritizing heals to keep people up, yep. I would say that lamp was a little premature though. He wasn't really trying to, I don't think he needed to save anyone. Yeah, so maybe like, saving it for the flux, but again, that's like mid-fight where things break down. It's probably more difficult to track. I think, I think it's a good point, though. Bad.
be in the pack, so he doesn't have to use his ship to heal himself. Yeah, and just like, it's a very chaotic fight, and there's a lot of damage being traded, so here he's really prioritizing the heals just to keep everyone up. A lot of healing grenades coming in. Um, and now, once they're up and point control has been reached, full DPS uh, on Sparkle. Wow. Nice juke right there. And yeah, using the jump for jukes. So they have the control of the point. Violet has window. So, I mean, this is like a situation where I feel like Violet really shines and starts to get to really weave in a lot of that early damage as the enemy has to push into them. So early window, putting pressure on the shields, comboing it with the Orisa Halt. And they don't necessarily get a kill, but again, like going back to what we said before, it turns Paris' uh, push, and yeah, you got the lamp out. So now Paris is doing the opposite thing. Two picks, making sure Twilight stays up, and I imagine it's just going to be full DPSing. Still being very mindful of the Widow, though. I mean, I think he was trying to jump a bit higher, but then he noticed XC might have an angle on him, so... Um, yeah, you also noticed that he, like, lamped the corner when he got pulled. I think that's a good heads-up play. Um, because you know they're pulling for the window, right? Right. He's just... Uh... So now, again, taking... Kind of an, a bit of an off-angle on the high ground. Like, again, like, at this level, they're all tracking, so realizing that, like, a blade is coming in. And Widow has walls, and realizing the Sparkle is like in that direction, probably saving a lamp for Sparkle's blade. He's taking the duel. This is actually kind of crazy. I mean, this is. I think it's important to recognize there. He has a lot of trust in his team. He didn't like look at the tanks at all. Yeah. Um. You know, at this level, they're probably communicating this. But certainly in more of a ranked environment, I imagine he's gonna probably throw a lamp down to. So he did what he oh. could, but that was still a very big flux. Um, I imagine some people were still kind of out of LOS of the lamp. Yeah, I'm not too sure what happened there. It looked like the lamp was good, but I think it, it looked like it got destroyed right before they fell. So taking the high ground, and there's probably going to be a very nice window angle here. So windows and immediately goes straight for the damage. Like the team is like already pretty full. Yeah. So again, just like going, like knowing the opportunity at hand. Uh, this is wow. No oh, that's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Very himself. dangerous. He had to lamp himself, but he's just walking out in front of. An enemy window. Wow, I mean, this is this is pretty impressive. But I mean, I think especially on that last round, right? We have to say that like a lot of what Violet is able to do is certainly based on shocked play style. We've, we've said this before, right? Yeah. But there were a few times where he just wasn't looking at his team at all and was either one v oneing or one v twoing like a Genji, like Sparkle. Just making sure he won that duel. And I mean, that's not to say that's not a bad play or anything, but like, he like he knew that the tanks, his tanks would stay up. Um, I probably had trust in them, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think that one fight, that one kill on Sparkle, he was like Sparkle was just like in. I don't know why he was going back there, but I think it was just like in between fights, right? Well, cool. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, should we, I mean, I guess just quickly recap. So like, I think some of the principles we've been talking about. So I guess we can just start with like the basic cooldowns and the ultimate. So in the ultimate, like we're talking about window usage, really being kind of aggressive with window, not holding on to it too long. I mean, I guess the general yeah. play style that we're really like realizing with Violet is right. Like going for plays and not just being too passive or tentative with using cooldowns, right? Like not wasting cooldowns, of course, but understanding kind of the plays at hand. So uh, really going for aggressive ultimates that deny space or prevent teams from pushing in in certain niche situations using it as like a big healing boost uh, with lamp we're talking about denying very critical cooldowns or ultimates on the other side 
uh, using it and, and placing it around corners if possible or areas where the lamp can't be destroyed. Um, also using lamp to kind of save teammates in 1v1s if it really could like turn a fight or if you're at the end of a fight and you'll have window up, or sorry, lamp up by the time you need it again, right? And then shift, left shift kind of being a healing boost, like if a bunch of te teammates are, are very low and critical or saving it for when you're going to reload so you kind of have like a constant heal boost. And then what else? Using like being able to juke with the exo boots, I think is like really critical. Saving it for, you know, when you get bladed or you know you're gonna get pressured and, and adapting your positioning based on the context of the fight. Like if you're tracking a few critical ultimates um, like as BAP, like enemy offensive ultimates, DPS ultimates, like certain tank ultimates. Um, like knowing how you'd alter your position, potentially playing split from your team. And then, I mean, perhaps the core thing with Violet's play style is just kind of knowing how to weave in a lot of damage. So not just being a heal bot, but like recognizing opportunities when your tanks are full to kind of go for more damage. Weave in the left clicks. Um, and kind of prioritize low targets. I think one thing to kind of point out is like we talked about Violet's damage output right but like I think it's important to recognize the target priority too so it's like with Sparkle right we were talking about how like interestingly enough early fight he was focusing tanks down a lot but with Violet and Bap's damage right it was much more on squishies it seemed like a lot of time especially like Genji or like breaking lamp down um so like yeah. more prioritizing low targets I think based on the nature of his weapon and fire rate it works just like, like Bap is not gonna kill anyone yeah, but like you can at least pressure people out. Um, yeah, like if you're, yeah, you can't, you like, you know, you can't just like Genji kind of like free farm, just like use your damage to push them out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, anything else you want to add? No. I think that's it. Um, I mean, there's probably some more nuances that I'm missing, but. Overall, I think we hit most of the good stuff. Nice. Alright, cool. Thanks for watching.